Salah. Good morning, Salah. Incidentally, you're not wearing a hat today. I'm wearing a cap. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Nigerians. Welcome to Kakaki Social. On this segment of the show, we spotlight the issues shaping conversations in the Nigerian social media. Yesterday, we brought you the report that the EFCC froze Peter Obi's accounts. Just as that news was trending in the Nigerian social media, another report broke yesterday that the EFCC raided uh, an apartment where Atiku's sons are residing in Maitama. That issue has generated some talk in the Nigerian social media. Let's take a look at how that issue was trending uh, yesterday. Uh, the, the EFCC raid Atiku's uh, son's apartment in Maitama. Uh, let's take a look uh, on the social media. Premium Times actually brought us a report on that issue uh, the EFCC raiding an apartment where uh, Mustafa Atiku and uh, Aliyu Atiku, two sons of uh, the PDP presidential candidate and former vice president, uh, are residing in Maitama in Abuja. Let's go on and take a look at uh, how the report panned out. Uh, EFCC raids Atiku's son's apartment in Abuja. Uh, let's take a look at the next slide and look at the excerpt from this report that was trending yesterday. A building housing an apartment occupied by two sons of Atiku, Abubaka, was sacked by anti graft operatives in Abuja over the weekend, Premium Times has learned. The building also houses an apartment occupied by Chie Maker Oji, son of ex Abia State Governor Theodore Oji. That apartment was also reportedly searched by anti graft operatives. Although, as sources said, the home of Ms. Abubakar's children was the primary target, an anti graft spokesperson suggested Chie Mika might have been the target. Uh, comments already. Let's take a look at how Nigerians are reacting to this issue. Segaling tweeting said, Desperation of the highest order. In the end, everyone pays. Abuse of office is corruption, and you will all answer for your crimes. This is a brazen act of aggression intimidation and oppression from Segaling tweeting the Renault Mockery also fired off a tweet he said first EFCC froze honest Peter Obi's accounts while leaving Baba Chir, the proven thief now leading Buhari's re-election campaign in Adamawa today they have raided Atiku's sons is EFCC an arm of APC why the desperation to stop Atiku uh, Reno Mockery tweeting, but the EFCC came out yesterday to dispute and disclaim that report. According to a statement from the EFCC, they did not freeze Peter Obi's accounts and neither did they raid the apartment where Atiku's sons were residing. Uh, also, that uh, that information from the EFCC was further amplified yesterday by presidential spokesperson Garba Shehu tweeting, he said, the story about the raid ordered by the Buhari-led government on the home of PDP presidential candidate Atiku's son and the fairy tale on the alleged blockage of the bank accounts of the running mate, Governor Peter Obi and his family are both untrue. Presidential spokesperson Garba Sheo coming out to disclaim the reports that Peter Obi's accounts were frozen by the EFCC and also debunking the report from Premium Times that uh, uh, the EFCC raided an apartment where Atiku's sons were residing in Abuja. Uh, Borena Mokri fired again at Garba Sheo tweeting and said, shame on you for calling the raid on Atiku's son's home fake news. This same article fed you for 16 years when you were his spokesman and a member of PDP. His sons called you uncle. Now you deny them and their father because of food from Buhari. Renal Mokri throwing shots at presidential spokesperson uh, Garba Shehu yesterday after Garba Shehu came out to dispute reports that EFCC raided uh, an apartment where Atiku's sons were residing. But Twitter Nigeria is still talking about this issue. Uh, Dalhat tweeting at uh, D. Salah who said uh, two false claims from the PDP within two days as attested to by EFCC. One, Peter B's accounts have been frozen by the EFCC. Two, Atiku's son's house has been raided by the EFCC. Someone needs to tell them that if this is part of the Dubai strategy, it isn't working. From D. Salah who tweeted, let's go on and take a look at more comments from Nigerians from Mr. Ayenigba tweeting at Ibro Ayo. He said the search on Theodore Oji's son's flat in Abuja by EFCC became Atiku's son's story simply because they live in the same apartment. A country of armchair and politically compromised journalists. Uh, throwing shots at journalists there who filed the report. And from uh, Ad Gowell tweeting said that with largely depleting resources, PDP is becoming, BD, I beg your pardon, with largely depleting resources, PDP is beginning to heavily depend on fake news, the other leg of its hopeless campaign. In 48 hours, its fake news unit has churned out two bold faced lies. One, EFCC freezes Peter Obi's accounts. Two, EFCC searches Atiku's son's house. From Malale Adigun tweeting at Ad Gowell, we saw that tweet. Uh, let's take a look at uh, a few more comments on that issue. Okay, that's the last tweet on that. We move on now to this issue of Senator Ben Mure Bruce, who tweeted uh, a video where he actually said that. Uh, 
He actually said that uh, the Nigerian government and state government should privatize the universities that they own. And that uh, tweet uh, uh, generated a lot of comments. But we'll be taking a look at that shortly. We'll go on a short break now. When we return, we'll take a look at that video from Senator Ben Murray Bruce and the comments that flooded his timeline reacting to that uh, call for the privatization of universities owned by state governments and the federal government. We'll take a short break now. We'll return very shortly. We're still here. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at uh, what Senator Ben Murray Bruce tweeted. He tweeted about the privatization of universities. He said, I suggest the federal and state governments should privatize the universities that they own. This will bring in genuine investors and bring an end to the continuous ASU strikes. Let's take a look at this common sense video from Senator Ben Murray Bruce and the comments that followed. expect the federal government to satisfy the needs of every sector. Albert Einstein defines insanity as doing the same things and expecting different results. If Nigeria keeps doing the same thing, nothing will change and our university system will continue to decay and produce half-baked graduates. We have to make a change and I suggest that both the federal and state governments should privatize the universities that they own. When these universities are privatized, genuine investors will come in and inject money into the system, which will end the regular ASU strikes and increase the quality of graduates that our universities turn out. Both Nigerians and non-Nigerians will be proud to attend Nigerian universities, and the funds that would have been spent in maintaining these universities can now be used to give scholarships and grants to underprivileged children and also be invested in infrastructure. This will also reduce the very high number of Nigerian students going abroad to study at a great cost to our foreign reserves. You see, this is an example of a crisis becoming an opportunity, if we do the right thing. We must save our educational sector 
and the privatization of our universities is a solution that we must consider sooner than later. My name is Ben Murray Bruce, and I just want to make common sense. Okay, Senator Ben Murray Bruce calling for the privatization of Nigerian universities owned by the state governments and the federal government. But Nigerians on his timeline are not so excited about that idea. Let's take a look at the comments from Nigerians. Olaolu Olaolu Amide tweeted and said, Are you kidding me? You guys want to buy the whole country, right? What will happen to the masses who can't afford the existing criminal fees? You want education to be an exclusive right of the rich, right? This thinking is pathetic and wicked. Uh, that was from Ola Luamide tweeting and then from Nigerian Boy 247. Privatization is not the solution. Make the institutions that manage these schools responsible. Make them work. Why don't we privatize our government? The National Assembly, Aso Rock. Hmm. Okay. And then from Tobunlo tweeting said the good idea. However, if you privatize federal and state institutions, how will those families who government refuse to pay a good minimum wage afford to pay their case tuition fees? How many percent of the underprivileged will get the scholarships? Mr. Common Sense, think it through. From Ibrahim Tobun tweeting at Tobun Law, tweeting there. And then from at underscore Usman U underscore, as a senator and a lawmaker, you are not supposed to say this. Instead, you are to raise the motion and pressurize the federal government to settle the ASU, if not all at once. Then have payment. Thank you. From at Usman U tweeting there and then from Olorugun NS. After privatizing these state universities, then how will the average man receiving the poor minimum wage be able to pay the fees? Or are they going to privatize payment of their salaries also? Please, I beg to totally disagree with you, sir. Our problem is governance and corruption. From Olorogun NS tweeting there. One image has surfaced in the Nigerian media that has gotten a lot of Nigerians on social media talking. Uh, a picture of uh, PDP presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar and Vice President Yemi Oshibajo uh, and former President Gulag Jonathan in between the two of them at the interdenominational uh, 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 commendation service held in honor of uh, the mother of uh, governor, the late mother of governor of Bayes State, Seriaki Dixon. Uh, this image has got some talk in the social media. Uh, Twitter user Jafet Omojua shared this uh, photo with us with a tweet. He said, this is my photo of the week. VP Oshibajo and ex-VP Atiku, who go head to head in February as VP candidate and presidential candidate respectively, no matter what happens at the polls, everyone in this photo will be fine and their doors will never be closed against one another. Talking about the reality of Nigerian politics, I guess you can take a look at this image very closely. Uh, it doesn't seem like uh, they are preparing to go to some serious battle come February next year. This is the lifestyle of Nigerian politicians. Uh, they know how they meet, where they meet. And then uh, from Dr. Spice, isn't it a form of insolence that the president seeking the mandate of his people will send his VP to engage in a presidential debate? This is very unacceptable. Uh, tweeting at Omojua, Dr. Joa Abade. And then from, from Pride of Life 2018, just four years ago, Atiku ganged up with Oshibanjo to send GEJ packing. Now is GEJ supporting Atiku to kick Oshibanjo out. But then, all three are at an event and Atiku and Oshibanjo are discussing with GEJ watching on. But Amadichima and Festus Kayamo can never see eye to eye. Mm, food for thought. Ifunaya Edward tweeting said at tweeting at unique Ifunaya tweeting said, I think there should be more campaigns on this. People should be enlightened more on the fact that these politicians are the same and are not worth the stress. People need to really know this, please. Uh, and then uh, we saw this coming from Dario Lajumoke. No permanent enmity in politics. In short, no room for enmity. That's why I pity those who lay down their lives for the politicians in the name of bread at your own risk. From Dari Olajumoke and from Olua Show, Olua Soft Kid 88. All I see in this picture is that Jonathan is a very tolerant person and a nice man. <laughs> you can imagine Atiku's weight on his leg. <laughs> from Olua Soft Kid 88 Street in there. I will move on to one issue that is currently trending, particularly even on Instagram. Uh, Nollywood actor Gideon Okeke narrates his ordeal in the hands of Nigerian police. He was allegedly brutalized by policemen in Lagos. Let's take a look at how that issue uh, panned out in the social media. Gideon Okeke brutalized by the Nigerian police. He told the story on Instagram in a series of video you're going to watch shortly. He, uh, he had just finished a meeting with a brand guru Charles Otudo, left a co-hotel and he was on his road and had an accident with another motor user and then uh, he called the police to assist him and then from there it degenerated into something crazy. He talked about his experience. Let's take a look at the video and the comments that followed.
Good evening. My name is Gideon Okeke, an actor and a responsible citizen of the city of Lagos. I'd like to draw the attention of the office of the highest authority that this message may concern. There has recently been a threat on my life and my economy by men of the Lagos Division of the Nigerian Police Force. For a minor accident that happened between myself and another driver, Mrs. Mosumola Ilori. Yesterday at about 8 p.m. at the Lekki Roundabout, myself and Mrs. Mosumola Ilori, alongside her niece, were brutally manhandled by men of the Maroko Police Station after an accident that happened between us for which we were both settled and in agreement. The results are what you see on my face. I'd like to use the avenue of this message to humbly reach out to the esteemed office of the Executive Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Akinomi Ambodi, as well as the Lagos State Commissioner of Police, to kindly look into the lodged case of police brutality against unarmed civilians filed at the Maroko Police Station VI. As a result of this incident, Tonight, I am unable to appear at the Johnny Jazz and Whiskey Music Concert, for which I had been paid my full term to appear as the MC compare of that event. There goes the Nigerian police messing with my economy. There goes the Nigerian police messing with my life. I'd also like to state here that I'll be pressing full legal charges and taking this to the full extent of the law, as I expect that day the Nigerian police would if I were a common criminal. Okay, a very uh, pathetic incident there. Gideon Okeke brutalized by uh, Nigerian police. Let's take a look at how Nigerians reacting uh, to this issue. You've just seen on your screen uh, from a Twitter user wisdom of a diva, I don't understand this country again. Is it still safe to live in Nigeria? See what the police in Lagos made this actor go through. Kai, Gideon Okeke gets his lips stitched after allegedly being brutali brutally attacked by policemen and last month officials in Lagos. And then uh, we saw another tweet from... Uh, uh, from Samuel Nwite tweeting at Sunasami, I heard that Gideon Okeke was brutalized by Morocco police and the CP is interested in the matter. What if it's moved out from Mushin or me? <laughs> you are not a celeb. <laughs> okay, from Kate Henshaw, the police brutality must stop. We cannot continue this way. How do you ask for help from the police and end up brutalized? How? Gideon Okeke was brutalized by men of Morocco Division last night. Kindly help sort this at Sega Link and at Okbeto Dolakbo. Ah, but we got another response from, Chio, from e -Gioma, Gioma Limited, Gioma LTD tweeting said, Not being sensitive, Kate, but being a celebrity, was he involved in the NSAS movement? We don't want people to ignore bad situation when it's not happening to them and calling on Sega Link when the going gets tough. Hope he gets justice he deserves. Okay, comments on that issue. We've also heard that the Lagos State Commissioner of Police has ordered immediate investigation into the assault on Gideon Okeke. We move on very quickly from that issue to this video that is trending on Instagram. Still talking about Nollywood actors and Nigerian celebrities. Nollywood actor Kelvin Ikeduba rips his colleagues apart talking about the fake life that Nigerian celebrities, especially Nollywood actors, the way they live. Well, let's take a look at the video and some comments that followed. Truth be told, I they laugh any time I hear people say social media and a fake life. When I say social media, it they learn for where Nollywood day, Nollywood industry, the movie industry. Now they are the fakest life and the fakest people for this world day. If it is a day one of them, now your opinion, no problem, I accept. Well, I know they feel they help on herself, Nollywood people, entertainers. When I see on herself, I feel they assist on herself. They live fake life. They present on herself, which one I know be. Who tell you say be celebrity? You where they form celebrity. Who tell you say be celebrity? You never enter market, right or start, or traffic start on some market because of your presence. You where they acting where your, your neighbor no even know. No even know whether they acting, they form celeb. See, make I tell you true. You never even be celeb, talk less of pretty. Mo na change in our ways. Love no they Nollywood. Mo no they pretend. If you don't like person, let her know say no like him. When I go to the farm, people don't know now. No, are those people who own the farms, they farms us. Happy 219. If you don't like this video, stop me for road. 
Okay, comments on Instablog Niger. I am on the score sunrise. This guy is usually not the talking type. This one, pin him. True, true. Our celebs farms unnecessarily. Mumsy underscore Ashley on Instablog Niger posting said, Nice one. First person to ever see the truth and the fake life is among the ladies. So, so fake. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> then no more comments uh, on this issue. Let's take a look from uh, the Dawn underscore manager. Say no to fake life. Somebody no belefu for real life, but then go claim for social media. Say them belefu and a lie. Most especially all these Yoruba Nollywood actors and actresses. Moyeka <laughs> Bridget, all the big brother Niger housemates are on this table calling themselves celebrities when they are not. <laughs> Interesting commentary there. We move on quickly to another issue that was trending yesterday. NSCDC officer punches driver for demanding fare from him. An entitled NSCDC officer this morning brutalized the driver who insisted that he must pay his transportation fare in Ikoi, Lagos. It was gathered that the officer was claiming to be a staff, but the driver and conductor were not having it. They insisted that he must disembark. However, in the course of their scuffle, the officer punched the driver and gave him a deep cut. After seeing the accent of the wound, he tried fleeing from the scene, but he was caught and later dragged to the police station. Let's take a look at the video and the comments that follow. If you knew you cannot pay, you die. You are saying, I am still there. I beg. Okay, from uh, I am Tay underscore T. See his face. I'm sure he doesn't know the website of the NSCDC. <laughs> Reverend J.C. Joshua, stupid sense of entitlement. NSCDC should sack the mannerless officer. I am GDK. A lot of people are really frustrated in Niger. No patience or unity anymore. And then uh, action see me. That's what happens when you keep giving jobs based on who you know, based on who know who. Qualified people aren't given opportunities. Rather, touts are given uniforms, giving them more power to do more harm than good. From Mary Okonye, Two fighting, they were engaged in a scuffle. Police were asking to buy Panadol for the driver, and life goes on. Well, we hope life doesn't just go on. We hope that justice is served so that this will serve as a deterrent to others who are out there. Uh, this is where we draw the curtain this morning on Kakaki Social. I am Ohimaya Maize. Follow the conversation on all our various social media platforms at Kakaki Social on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Handy you over back now to Shola and Sally.